doesn't look like Sunday. As you might have guessed, there's something definitely up here at the Y.A. Rebels. And not necessarily a bad thing. Leah's taking a little break to work on her book because you guys like to read books and we like to write them and sometimes things life gets in the way. And so there you go. That's, that's just it. So for the time being, I'm going to be on Thursday. I, I don't even know how you're going to deal with that because I know you associate me with the Lord's Day and all that that entails. But it's Thursday for me. Now, you might be wondering, what does that mean for Sunday? Who am I going to have my brunch with, if not Danny Marks? So we're instituting what we like to call YA Rebel of the Month. Shimmer. And who's it going to be this month for November? Uh, it's going to be Sandy Pants. Click here. You can see her YA Rebels audition video to see why we picked her. Also, she's adorable. So look out for Sandy on Sunday. You never know who's going to show up in December because we've got our eyes on the rest of those auditions and we've got plans. Oh my God. So even after all those announcements and stuff, I've still got to talk about the topic in what? Less than two and a half minutes. Two minutes, probably. So the title of this video is that Sunday's going to juxtapose or is a juxtaposer. And that's really the thing. I am really influenced and inspired by um, artists and writers and film directors and, and sort of any sort of juxtaposition of different things, time frames with music. I think a really good example of this is... Um, and I'm going to pinpoint a specific theme from a movie that I'm not particularly a fan of, and that's Marie Antoinette, um, directed by Sofia Coppola. It stars Kirsten Dunst and Jason Schwartzman and lots of sort of interesting people. But what's more interesting to me about that is there are certain scenes in it, and this one in particular, this video here, is a scene in which there's a masked ball, and, and the, the costuming is beautiful, and the way it's shot is amazing. But it's just opposed with a goth song from the early 80s. Um, might have been late 70s, actually. Um, Susie and the Banshees, Hong Kong Garden, which just has nothing to do with it, but at the same time really kind of flavors the whole experience of the scene. And it makes it richer and bring makes it current and makes it sort of off just really kind of weird that's a big thing for me and i think it's a big thing for world building and i think it's what um got me interested in writing urban fantasy to begin with even though um i don't consider velveteen to be urban fantasy i have written urban fantasy in the past what i like about that is that these all these fantasy elements are living concurrently with skyscrapers and you know, and lots of metal and, and shiny glass and mirrors and things like that, which is not something that's normal for like a fantasy setting. And so when I first got involved in that, I was like, oh, I love the visuals of this. I'm a very visual person. A lot of fashion photography has some of the most interesting visuals going on right now in fashion videos, things like that. Um, I think they're just willing to um, stretch the limits of everything, filth, I mean, good taste, and um, just what it is to be a person. I mean, because they're they're putting like crow heads on models and lots of interesting things. And I like that stuff. That's kind of my thing. I love it. So um, I think that's probably why I'm really digging um, Lainey Taylor's Daughter of Smoke and Bone right now. It has that sort of opulent lushness of the um, of the visual imagery that just really I just I just get off on it. So that's it. That's what inspires me. Um, remember to check out Sandy on Sunday. <laughs> what the fuck am I looking at?